The Lion King is basically the most popular Disney movie there is, though it's not one of my personal favorites. It's another of Disney's golden age darlings with catchy songs, emotional moments, and colorful scenes. It's yet another coming-of-age story, but the lesson isn't about familial relationships or learning to care for others. Rather, it's about personal failure in discovering who you are. I don't know how good it is at covering that lesson, but I do see what it tried. Simba is a bratty child to begin with, arrogant, self-absorbed. It's hard to blame him. Children are inexperienced and they don't know their limits. And though he does get into trouble, what he learns doesn't entirely sink in. And then his dad dies, and Simba believes it's his fault. He runs, and, again, it's something we can understand. Children make many mistakes, and they're not mature enough to take responsibility for them. They'll hide, they'll run, they'll blame others. I did this when I was a kid, and, I mean, there's an adult expectation that they don't, but... Children who are scared of consequences will do anything to get out of trouble, even if it means shirking responsibility. Which leads us to Hakuna Matata. Let the past die. Kill it if you have to. Pumbaa and Timon are useless adults. They're children who didn't grow up, and their problems get thrown into a bin, and they encourage Simba to do that too. And I mean, of course he does it. It's the easy way out. Sticking to the easy life, leeching off whoever volunteers time and resources, not caring at all about your past or future so long as your present is good. I'm sure that many of you know someone like this. It's short-sighted and selfish, and I'm a bit surprised that it's discussed so cheerfully in the movie. Timon and Pumbaa pick Simba up just because he might defend him. That is, they take advantage of him. To a degree, I understand why the easy route may be made to seem like a good option, at least to Simba, but as a kid's movie, I think it's a bit negligent to make the tone of a sequence so positive when it basically says, forget all your problems and just consume resources. They could have at least made it an obviously bad idea, even if Simba would do it anyways, to show kids that hiding from your problems is not good. And eventually, when Nala comes in, Simba realizes that he can't run from his problems anymore, and instead confronts them, and owns up to his faults. Like an adult should. But this also gets mixed with another message about understanding yourself. Simba gets confused about who he is. His realization that he needs to go back is because of Rafiki and the Dad Cloud. Cloud? Dad? Cloud? That is Dad. Uh, Rafiki says Mufasa lives in Simba, but Dad Cloud gets more to the heart of it, I think. It's not that Simba has to go back because he has obligations to who he was born to. Mufasa doesn't live inside Simba as some sort of family legacy. Rather, it's because at heart, Simba can't abandon his kingdom and his people. And just because he was responsible for so many problems doesn't mean he should hide forever. He hasn't discovered who he is by eating bugs in a jungle and avoiding conflict. By learning from his failures, he can understand who he really is. And he's not the kind of person who would just let Scar and the hyenas decimate the land and its people without end. That's the part of Mufasa that lives in Simba. The wisdom and compassion of a king. Heck, Scar is even Simba's antithesis, if you think about it. Although Scar seems like an arbitrary, evil, power-hungry villain on the surface, he actually shows the other side of the coin. Someone who sees the crown as not something one has, but something one is. He wants the praise and power Mufasa gets, and he thinks it's as simple as becoming king. Learning from his mistakes, not blaming others for his own issues, and discovering what he believes in would never occur to him. Scar believes that by being king, he would be somehow inherently better, and he is livid whenever someone says that Mufasa was better. He thinks he'll be respected, but the problem is at the core of his character, not whether or not he has the crown. Oh, it takes a bit of thinking. This movie is deep even if it's not complex. There's a lot of mysticism-type elements, shots that make this look like an epic. It's really one of Disney's more beautifully animated movies, and it has some really good lessons. The only thing I'd have to complain about is that the lessons aren't as blatant as they could be for a kid's movie. Even so, it was nice to think about how everything fit together. Those are my thoughts on The Lion King. 
I'd like to hear your thoughts on it, so please put them down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button, and have a good day.